Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Pepperoni Pizza Rolls. That's right, today we're making pizza rolls, but it's not the kind you're thinking of that comes in the plastic bag, they're frozen little guys. No, these are big pizza rolls. They're actually more like cinnamon rolls, except with pizza ingredients. So we're gonna start with pizza dough, we're gonna roll it out, we're gonna put some ranch dressing that we're gonna make from scratch on it, fill it up with some cheese, pepperonis, roll it up and slice it into these big rolls that we're then gonna bake on the yoder. So let's go ahead and get started by making the dough. We've got some hot water, warm water really, about 110 degrees. We're gonna add 325 grams to the bowl. All right, after that we're gonna do five grams of Caputo dry yeast. Just sprinkle it across the surface. And then I'll give this just a few minutes for all of that to start to mix together and that yeast to start to foam up just a little bit. All right, so we're starting to see that yeast get active. We're gonna add our flour. We're using the Caputo double lot pizza flour. We need 500 grams. And the last thing, we've got some kosher sea salt. We're gonna add 10 grams. All right, so we're gonna move this over to the KitchenAid. We've got our dough hook. We're gonna go second speed here. We'll let this mix for about 60 seconds or so until it starts to come into a ball. We're gonna set a timer for eight minutes. So you can see it's balled up now, cleared the sides. We'll go ahead and set our timer. So eight minutes is up. We're going to transfer this to an oiled container now, so I'm just going to hit my Cambro here with some olive oil. You can do this in a bowl. I just like to do it in a plastic container because I can kind of see uh, just how much it's doubled or, or how much it's risen in size. So we'll transfer that dough right in there. cover it up with a lid and leave it to double in size. So here's when I started earlier. You can see it's puffed up in size. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this out of the surface. We're gonna divide it in half to make two separate rolls. If you can kind of keep it square shape, then you can see just where to cut in half. Otherwise you can use a scale if you like to. And then these I'm just gonna ball up. Roll those, just get a little tension on the skin there, across the top. A little too slick in that spot. And these will cover with plastic and we'll let them rest for at least 30 minutes before we roll those out. Now there's two different sauces that we're gonna be making to go with our pizza rolls today. The first is a buttermilk ranch dressing and that's going inside the pizza roll. The second is just a red tomato sauce for dipping. So let's go ahead and put together that buttermilk ranch. All right, we're gonna start off with a half cup of mayo, add a half cup of sour cream, and then a few tablespoons of buttermilk. And then we've got to get to our aromatics. So we've got a single clove of garlic we're going to grate down on the microplane. We're going to get a tablespoon each of dill and some green onion, and then a quarter cup of parsley. So the microplane just makes really quick and easy work of the garlic here. Plus you can break it down super fine, so it just kind of melts right in. Now the rest of these herbs, we just want to make sure, well I should say the herbs and the onion, we're going to mince them up really fine. You can even do this in a blender or food processor, but chances are you're gonna break it down so far, it just turns the entire sauce green, which is kind of cool. But we're gonna have a little bit more texture in there today. Now with the green onions, we're just gonna really use the green portion of these. Slice them nice and thin and then mince them up a little bit more beyond that. And now the parsley. We get mostly leaves. I don't mind getting a little bit of stem in there. Not that big of a deal. So then we're gonna hit it with about a teaspoon of lemon juice. And we'll just finish it off with a little bit of kosher salt and some black pepper. 
Then we're just gonna whisk this up. Whisk just to dissolve that salt a little bit so we can get a good feel of the taste. Let's check this out. Yeah, it's good, it's balanced. Slightly acidic, which is what we want it to be. Doesn't need any salt, so let's just go ahead and set this aside. We're gonna start to work on our tomato sauce. Now the tomato sauce is four easy ingredients. You've got some San Marzano tomatoes, a couple cloves of garlic, some Italiano seasoning, and some good extra virgin olive oil. So we're gonna make this a nice smooth tomato sauce, which means we're gonna blend it up before we cook it down. Let's start with the tomatoes. We're gonna add a teaspoon of our Italiano seasoning and a couple tablespoons of the olive oil. Now this is partially for flavor because I love that, that olive oil flavor, but also because that fat just helps to move those flavors around your mouth as the fat coats your mouth. Now for the garlic here, we don't have to worry about mincing this down because we're putting it in the blender, so let's just smash it, get the skins off of there, and throw it in the blender. All right, throw it on the Vitamix, start low, and just bring it up until it's totally pureed. Good. Now we're gonna cook this sauce down a little bit, uh, partially just to concentrate the flavors and also just to get the consistency just right. Uh, because we're cooking it down, I'm not gonna add it or taste anything for any salt right now because those flavors are gonna concentrate, so we'll taste it when it's cooked down to the desired consistency. All right, so we're just gonna dump this in the stob here. We'll check on it every once in a while, give it a little stir. But for now, we'll just let it do its thing. All right, now let's go ahead and roll out our dough. All right, so we get a little flour down on the surface, help everything move. See how that really puffed up again. As we kind of take some of that out, we're just gonna start to form this into sort of a square shape. And then we'll go to work with the rolling pin. Now in the time that this has been rising and relaxing, it's allowed us to be able to roll this out without it shrinking back immediately because that gluten's relaxed. So I wanna get this into a rectangular shape with the idea being that we're gonna get it about an eighth, an eighth to a quarter of an inch thick. We want it longer in one direction than the other. So we're gonna try and get six rolls out of each one of these. I'm going to chill this down again before we actually assemble the rolls so we don't have to get it perfect for now, we just want to get it close. So that looks about right, about the right thickness. So we're going to go ahead and put this on a pan where we can then transfer it to the refrigerator. We'll do the next one and just stack them on top of each other. Again, just sort of gently press that out into a square rectangle shape to get started. See that sauce simmering away over here. Let's go ahead and give that a little stir, make sure we're not sticking. Yeah, you're starting to see those bubbles getting bigger. Reducing that down in consistency. It's doing well. All right, feeling good about this one. So we'll go ahead and load that one up as well. And then just into the fridge to chill down a little bit. Next, we're gonna grate up the cheeses and do a little knife work for the filling ingredients. We got two different cheeses today. One is this low moisture mozzarella that I smoked about a week ago, did a cold smoke on that. The other one is the pepper jack. So we're gonna go ahead and get these grated down. If you wanna check out how to do cold smoking on your smoker, we do have a video on how to cold smoke cheese. You guys can go check that out. Pretty simple process, especially if you've got a yoder like the one we're cooking on today. Although you can make it work on just about anything. So I know it's tempting to buy the nice fresh mozzarella that's really delicious. 
but there's really just too much moisture in it for what we're doing today, which is why we're using the low moisture mozzarella. And the pepper jack's gonna add a nice creaminess. So next we're gonna slice up some green onions. We need about a half cup. And then of course we've got our pepperoni. And I've just got about a half pound chunk of this. You can use slices if you want. We're gonna dice this up fairly small today. All right, now the tomato sauce has just been sitting here, hanging out, staying warm. Which, whether or not it's warm when you serve it, that's totally up to you. But now that we've kind of got this consistency that we're going for, just reduced a bit. We're gonna go ahead and transfer that over to our jar, just for easy storage. Could've used a little bigger boat. But that's most of it. So now we've kind of got all of our ingredients ready to go. Let's go ahead and get these assembled. All right, that's held its shape pretty well. Might just smooth it out here. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with some of that ranch dressing. I'm going to do about a third of a cup and we'll spread that across the surface here. Now with everything we do for our filling, we're going to leave ourselves just a little border right here, a strip right on this end because that's the end we're going to tuck underneath the rolls. We can spread all the way to the end over here. So now we'll go ahead and add half of our pepperoni. So next we're gonna add half of our cheeses. Start with the pepper jack. And then our smoked mozzarella. So a couple quick seasoning things here. We're gonna just shake on a little bit more of that Italiano that we put into the red sauce and hit it with a little bit of our pit fire hot sauce. And we are ready to roll. So I'll typically start at one corner, just pull over and kind of work your way down doing that. And you wanna Start this as tight as possible. Try not, not to have this so loose that it just wants to fall apart. So keep your roll tight. And once you get started, you can kind of go all at the same time, just keeping it tight all the way down. Until it's all the way rolled up. Someday we'll do something similar to this, like a stromboli kind of thing and just cook the whole thing. But for today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this into rolls. So I'm just gonna take off the very edges here where everything kind of tapers off. That final like half or three quarter of an inch. And then like I said, we're gonna go with six rolls out of each one of these. So we're gonna do each six rolls in one 12 inch skillet. I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of our spray duck fat. And then one by one, we're gonna add these. You're gonna take this part that hasn't, has nothing on it and you're gonna tuck it underneath. And I should probably start with one of these in the center. They typically are the most full ones and we'll put that right there in the center. So that dough on the bottom holds everything in. And then we'll give them just enough space around one another that they can kind of expand as they cook. 
Now, purely for aesthetics, you're gonna add a little egg wash to give it kind of a nice shine, help it darken up a little bit on the outside. This is a step that you can skip and it's still gonna taste great. But you know, presentation's worth something. So I'm gonna do that exact same process with the other rolls and we'll head over to the grill. So I totally forgot to put the green onions on the first one. So we figured we'd show you the green onions. So I won't go crazy, but uh, we'll still just use half of these. As Justin, the man behind the camera said, one for the kids, one for the adults. That's fine. Well, today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill, cooking at 450 degrees, kind of a unique setup, so come check it out. So since we're cooking hot, like 450, I don't wanna just put all that heat right on the diffuser, so I've taken the door out. If you don't have a two-piece, you'll just go full direct, and that's totally fine. So we're just gonna position our pizza rolls in the most indirect zone we can to the far right side of the grill. This is gonna take about 45 minutes or so, so we'll go 20 minutes and rotate, and then we'll check them out. All right, so we're about at that halfway mark now. You see, kind of getting golden. Definitely need some more browning, but nice and shiny on the surface. We're gonna go ahead and switch these around. And at the same time, I'm just gonna give the skillet a spin. So we're cooking these evenly especially with that intense fire coming from the left side. Well, it's been about 45 minutes. Our pizza rolls have been on the grill. They're looking fantastic. Browning's good, cooked all the way through. We're ready to pull them off. So nicely browned, starting to get some color on the bottom, but also cooked all the way through. You want a little texture on the outside, but it should be nice and soft. Both pans looking pretty good. All right, we're getting them plated up. We'll get our tomato sauce there for dipping. It just hit the tops of these with a little bit more ranch. Give a little dusting of Parmesan. With the last of those green onions. All right, let's dig into this thing. Well, super tender, can already tell right away. Nice and fluffy in the middle. Get the dunk. Get some of that red sauce on there. Oh, yeah. Nice pepperoni pizza rolled up. Man, flaky. It's a little bit tangy from the ranch, which is great. Spice of that pepperoni and a little bit of hot sauce, and of course it's very cheesy. But man, that is a, that's a fun little treat. We've been eating stuff like this at a restaurant around here since I was a kid. So to kind of recreate that sort of pepperoni roll with our own recipe over the last couple of weeks has been a lot of fun. And this came out even better than I remember them. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.